So 80 M Street, the existing building is a reinforced concrete structure, seven stories in height. And the addition is three stories, primarily mass timber. Well, hey folks, Ricky McLean with Woodworks here back for yet another edition of Timber Talk Tuesday. It's been said in the past that in some cases, the most sustainable structure is the one that you already have, meaning it is probably more efficient to add on or renovate to an existing building rather than demolishing it and building something from scratch. The ADM Street project in Washington, D.C. is one example of a vertical addition where the owner was able to increase the value of the property while maintaining the existing building, which is a seven-story structure, and three stories of mass timber office space were added on top. I recently had the opportunity to discuss this project with Lauren Wingo. Lauren is a senior engineer in the structures division of Arup in their Washington, D.C. office. She worked on this project, specifically the structural design of the project. And in this conversation, we talked through the hybrid approach that they chose to use of primarily mass timber framing for the vertical addition, plus some structural steel at the core, as well as a structural steel framework to add on to directly on top of the existing building. So I'll get right out of the way. Let's jump over to the conversation that I had with Lauren Wingo of Earth. All right, Lauren, well, thanks for joining me today. Maybe you could start out by just providing a general overview of the structural system used at the ADM Street Vertical Edition. Sure. So ADM Street, the existing building is a reinforced concrete structure, seven stories in height, and the addition is three stories, primarily mass timber. In the tenant areas, it's a traditional post and beam structure with glue lamb columns and beams and then CLT floors. And then in the back of house core area, we have a traditional steel frame structure. Got it. And maybe you could touch on uh, why you chose that hybrid system of, like you mentioned, timber and structural steel. What were some of the reasons that you ultimately went with that over something else? Yeah, there were a couple of reasons behind that. From a structural perspective, we decided to go with the timber as the vertical gravity system, so using it for gravity only. And then in the core area, we use steel as our vertical lateral system. That was for a number of reasons, primarily because it's accepted code approach structurally to use steel. Um, we also gained some efficiency on a pricing perspective in that we wanted to reserve any premium that we might pay for mass timber to be in the tenant areas where you could fully experience the mass timber rather than in the core areas where it's going to typically be covered up. Got it. Now, with this being a vertical addition, what impact did the use of either timber itself or timber in conjunction with the steel as a hybrid system, what impact did that have on reinforcing work required in the existing building? How extensive was that? Yeah, one of the primary drivers for the owner when looking at this project is to make sure that the building was able to be fully occupied during construction. And that meant that we couldn't have any reinforcing works in the tenant areas below. And that was one of the drivers to using the, the steel um, brace frames as our lateral system. By doing that, we concentrated any additional reinforcing that would be needed within the core area itself. We found that the existing structure below, due to the lightweight nature of mass timber, had enough capacity uh, within the tenant areas to accommodate that additional weight, but the additional lateral loading caused us to need reinforcing. But because that was limited to just the core, we didn't have to impact the tenant spaces below. So this obviously is a, a unique style of construction where you're adding additional stories to the existing building. So. What were maybe some lessons learned or some things that were worked through in the construction phase of the project? Yeah, one of the biggest issues we came across during the design phase even was that the existing roof structure, being that it was constructed out of reinforced concrete, was actually pitched to drain for their roofing system. And that meant that we didn't have a level surface to construct off of when we went up with the timber addition. 
And so one of the really successful design decisions that we made was to actually create a steel layer directly above the existing roof. So we created a new flat floor out of steel, steel framing, and then we were able to go up with the glue lamp columns from there. And that meant that we didn't have to pair up glue lamp, which can be, you know, fabricated very precisely with the existing concrete elevations, which varied a lot. I can imagine with mass timber, also the tolerances are very tight compared to some other building materials. So that probably helped in that regard too, where you weren't trying to maybe do site surveys of each individual column to get lengths exactly right. So that was probably a benefit um, adding that steel layer, like you said. With this being a pretty unique project in the sense that it's a vertical addition, it also is now starting to exceed what would have been the older heights and areas allowances, at least number of stories and height allowances for mass timber. Um, what aspects of the project required uh, a variance and kind of how did you go about getting approval for that through the, the District of Columbia? Yeah, in this, I have to give our local authority having jurisdiction a lot of credit for being a collaborative partner with us. We were able to have really early discussions with them. And one of the approaches we took for the project is that we wanted to limit the risk to the owner. So we didn't want to take on too many challenges in regards to the code to make it uh, you know, a riskier project overall. So early on, we met with AHJ. And one of the things when you're building an addition out of mass timber, it doesn't really fit within the bounds of type 4C, type 4B, type 4A. The approach that we took was, if you look at it, it's three stories of mass timber. So we did it as a type 4C construction on top of type 1B. Um, the type 1B, 1B being non-combustible construction. And that allowed us to create a code pathway specific to the project that incorporated the new tall wood provisions. And again, we did that in conjunction with the AHJ to find a successful approach that met all the safety objectives. Great. <clears throat> Super interesting. Well, Lauren, I appreciate you sharing your insights. This is a project that I think is, is going to be a precedent setter for other vertical additions. I think it's one of the benefits with mass timber being a lightweight structure like you found with this project. So thank you very much for sharing your insights today. Thanks, Ricky. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Lauren. I do think that the ADM Street project is a prime example of how we can leverage our existing building stock, doing vertical additions, doing horizontal additions, adding value to those sites while keeping them intact. Well, that's all for today's video. I thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.